Hey there, welcome back to Western Plan Explorers. My name's Julian Lawrence. Today we're off to the south side of Mount St. Helens to view the connection between a volcanic eruption and plants. But not that eruption. This eruption happened thousands of years ago. It's primary succession. Grab your geology gear and let's go exploring. So this is called the cave basalt flow. It erupted from the south side of Mount St. Helens 1900 years ago. A lava flow destroys everything in its path, creating a new bare rock landscape when it cools. From that time, the establishment of life on the flow is called primary succession. The speed of primary succession depends on a few factors like healthy forests or habitat nearby, climate, and precipitation. In general, algae and lichen are the first to colonize a lava flow. Debris and plant detritus blows in from surrounding areas, water pools and crevices, lichens grow and secrete acids that break down the rock. Wind and water erosion break it down more. Mosses colonize the area. Eventually, you begin to have pockets of soil. Seeds are deposited by winds or animals, which grow in the crevices in the soil. More and more, plants and animals begin to colonize the area. As they decompose, they create more soil. In time, the lava is completely covered with mosses, lichens, and plants. You can't see the rock at all. A forest is being established. Here we see the end of the lava flow at the Lewis River, which clearly stopped it 1900 years ago. Look at the height of the lava flow here. It likely filled an ancient river valley on its descent to the Lewis River. Further north, up the flow, the forest is much thicker, the tree is much larger, but we're on the same lava flow. What happened here? Why is this forest more advanced than where we were down the flow? We're actually on top of the lava flow right here, but in those 2,000 years, multiple ash eruptions have happened as well, and those have settled onto this lava flow. So if you look down here, you'll see that rodents have been digging through the ash flow, and as they dig up, the dirt, you can see that this is in fact Mount St. Helens ash. As it ran down, the top part of it cooled off and solidified, making a crust, while the underneath portions continued to run down. What you see behind me here is where the top heaved up as lava behind it was shoving it forwards. That kind of lava is called pahoyhoy, and I have a piece of it here. As you see, it is extremely porous. There are lots of gas bubbles in this lava, but if you turn it to this side, you'll see that this portion was in fact facing, this was the underside of the crust. It was facing the heated portion below, and that's why it's more melted than the rest of this. So we're actually down inside the lava flow right now. As the lava came down through a forest, it actually caught up amongst some trees. There's tree wells around. And this is the mold of two tree trunks that the lava flow went over. The, the tree trunks then burnt away and left this exposed tube. And you can crawl through this now in the lava. Here we go, climbing down into what used to be a tree trunk. The tree burnt away as lava solidified around it. And this is a fallen tree that was against the trunk. You can see the impressions of the bark on the walls. Now we climb through the fallen trunk. Oh, that gets narrow. Oh. You know when you started recording? I already did. Okay. Oh. 
Okay, we got an opening. Nice. And out into the light again. We've just been through a lava flow. This area has many tree casts, some quite impressive. So we're standing at Lahar viewpoint, and in fact, I'm standing on the Lahar. 40 years ago, during the big eruption in 1980, the Shoestring Glacier, which was up in that notch, melted and sent a huge mudslide down this slope. The Lahar raced down the slope but deposited wet mud and ash where it slowed down, like this flatter area. The mud and ash contained no organic materials and was unsorted, meaning it was a poor place for most plants to grow. Since the lahar removes all of the vegetation in the area and leaves behind an inhospitable place for new plants, it leads to primary succession, like a lava flow. In the 40 years since the eruption, this area has been recolonized. This is moss covering the ground and a new forest of trees and manzanitas is growing in. The large boulders were carried by the lahar and deposited here. The entire ground is covered with moss, which keeps many smaller plants from seeding into the soil. In the years since the lahar, winter snowmelt has continued to rush down this slope, taking away much of the ash and sandy material leaving a landscape nearly devoid of plant life. The tall trees on the sides are survivors of the eruption and lahar. They mark an edge of where lahar came down this very slope. In the other direction are trees growing in on the portion of the lahar deposit where the snowmelt doesn't flow. In this direction, you can see the eroded edge of the lahar. In there, we see successive ash deposits. A few strong survivors hang on, however, and these flower and set seed during the summer months. The Lahar split between the Pine Creek watershed and the Muddy River watershed. As it raced through the Muddy River Valley, it tore out and eroded the old channel, exposing several layers of old lava flows and creating beautiful waterfalls for the Muddy River. You can see multiple large layers of lava along the sides of the canyon, if you can take your eyes away from the falls. Some of these layers are metamorphosed by overlying lava, and some are quickly decomposing from exposure to the elements. We hope you've enjoyed our look at the volcanics and forests on Mount St. Helens. Feel free to like or subscribe below, and leave a comment if you want to tell us what you think. And also, if you want to support us, you can go over to our Patreon page. Patreon supporters are integral to growing the scope of what we do here. Well, for Western Plant Explorers, I'm Julian Lawrence. Thanks for watching. So we are reading 96 degrees, and because it's so hot out here, we have to keep the phone in the cooler. It overheats and then stops working. Good times. Blabity blabity blab, blabity 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 blab. So we're at la. 
So we're standing at Lava... Fucking A, it's not Lava Viewpoint, type shit. <clears throat> to suggest maybe... I'm tired. I can't, if I see you laughing, it just makes me laugh. Do you want me to walk away? At least get a little out of my view, because you're laughing at me. <laughs> no, hey, stop that. Good enough. <laughs>